Hey everybody, it's Mr. Clark. I'm here with Mr. Barry. and We wanted to take a couple minutes today to go through some financial aid information for those seniors that may be filling out the FAFSA or be unsure of what financial aid is or, or how that affects them for future after graduation. So we're going to go through a few things here and get this video posted so everybody can go and refer to it. Like always, you can always call us and ask questions if you have questions about that. Uh, first of all, we're going to go through kind of the different types of financial aid. The first type of financial aid are grants. A lot of them are like your Pell Grant, Supplemental Education Grants, Teacher Assistance Grants. The great thing about grants are, are they're, they don't have to be paid back. It's kind of free money if you're able to qualify for that. And that is dependent on your FAFSA when you fill that out and how much need you have. The government may award you with some grants. So those are great opportunities for kids. If you are able to get grants, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. The next thing is work study. Work study, there's two different types of work study. The first one that you can qualify for is the federal work study, which is subsidized by the federal government. And you can qualify for that by filling out the FAFSA. And the college or tech school that you're attending will let you know if you do qualify for that. Work study basically is a, is a paycheck to students. A couple different ways. A lot of times that will go right to your, to your bill, to whatever you owe for college. And you'll just, that'll automatically go on there. And you'll just have to work so many hours to fulfill that requirement. Sometimes if, if, there's, if there's more need in that area, students can continue to work in that federal work study job until the end of the school year. And then once your amount is paid to your bill, then you just receive a paycheck. If you don't qualify for federal work study, we encourage students to apply for regular work study. There's usually work study right directly through the college where students can work in a variety of different areas across campus it's nice and close you usually don't have to travel very far and there's a lot of need whether it be in the food service program maintenance grounds um, i worked in the gym when i was in college and, and opened the gym up or or supervise the weight room and things like that so there's a lot of opportunities that students can have for work study whether they qualify for the federal part of it or not there should be opportunities for students and then the last thing is the loans which unfortunately a lot of times students have to take loans to pay for college. There's a couple different types of loans. There's uh, the subsidized loan, which if, if you qualify for a subsidized loan, that means that the federal government will pay the interest while you're in school. And then there's the unsubsidized, which means that the interest will uh, accrue during your college years. Um, the one thing about the federal loan program, whether it's subsidized or unsubsidized, you do not need to start repaying those until six months after graduation. And so they're, they're usually pretty good loans to have that you don't have to worry about until you're done with your schooling and get into a career. Also, we'll go over interest rates here in a minute, but usually they're fairly low interest rates. And those are usually locked in for the time that you're in school. The other thing there at the very bottom of the screen here is a plus loan, which is a parent plus loan. And if, if the loans and your grants and different scholarships, work study. If you're still short, you can or parents can apply for a plus loan to help students um, fill that gap in of what they need to attend college. And usually that's the parents sign off on that. And they can get up to the full amount that is needed. If your parents don't qualify for a plus loan, then it automatically means that the student will qualify for an additional amount of unsubsidized loans to help cover the need that there is for um, the cost of attendance. So that kind of goes through your basic types of financial aid. Now let's go over some of the interest rates here. Here's kind of a, a little chart. So it's kind of broken down by whether it's undergraduate or graduate or professional degrees. So for undergraduate, whether it's unsubsidized or subsidized, the interest rate's locked in at 3.73% right now. If you're getting an unsubsidized loan to go back to school for your master's or a doctorate degree or some other professional degree, it's a little bit higher at 5.28. And then the parent direct plus loans for parents or graduates or per professionals is a little bit higher at 6.28%. Those are the rates that would go through July of this year, 2022. So now Mr. Barry's gonna go over a couple common terms that you might 
might come across while you're filling out the FAFSA. Okay, so first of all, we have a FAFSA. What is a FAFSA? Because everybody needs to fill one of these out, regardless of whether you think that you are going to need some financial aid or not. It's always good to go and fill out that financial aid form. And what that stands for is free application for federal student aid. <clears throat> okay, that's something that, that everybody, all students who are going to college should fill out, and that will give you an indication of, of what some of these other things that we talk about as we go on, and they will be able to, to allude to that. So you have an FSA ID. In past years when you filled out a FAFSA, they always gave you a PIN. Well, this has replaced the PIN over the years, and we'll go through this in a little bit, but everybody should go and create an FSA ID. It's how you sign your financial aid, all right? Cost of attendance, of course, we have, you know, when you go to college, you have a lot of direct and indirect costs. Your direct costs may be, you know, your, your tuition, things like that. Your indirect costs might be travel, might be, is that books in that? also yeah. um, uh, maybe some online resources things like that that you're going to need mm -hmm. expected family co uh, contributions or your EFC um, when you get done filling out your FAFSA they're going to tell you what um, your family is expected to pay okay and they'll go through and they'll say what are your incomes what are your assets for both the student and the family your family size um, the age of the oldest parent number of children currently attending college that could have a big factor in that also as to how much money um, as in grants as well as in loans that you get. Special circumstances, okay, do you have health related expenses, loss of property, your death in the family, all these things can um, add um, uh, financial aid that you may, may get or receive and it also might deter some of the things that you get from the federal government. But it's important that you go through, you fill out all this information and then they can kind of give you the best scenario that you can for your students. Um, financial need, what are you going to need for your college? Now, there's there's need that they have, that's a, the exact amount of money they need for their tuitions, things like that. Now, ab anything above and beyond um, can be used for other things, but they're going to give you exactly what, uh, give you an idea of exactly the need that you're going to need for college. Your student aid report, when you're done filling out your FAFSA, they're going to create a student aid report that's going to basically go through all your information that you've filled in, as well as um, you know your college that you're attending, um, all that stuff that you'll need to double check to make sure that all the information is put put uh, in correctly. Then you'll have a master promissory note. Once they issue your you your financial aid, they'll have a master promissory note that all kids have to fill out. I believe it's only as a freshman that you have to sign that note and that can be signed with your FSA ID and things like that. Yep, that's something you'll have to do the first time and that's kind of basically your promissory note for your loans and different grants and different things like that. Um, along with that, you see that next line is the loan counseling. So those two things have to be completed before any financial aid is released to the school that you will be attending. And the last thing there is gift aid, which is just basically your free money, whether that be in a scholarship form or grant form, you know, some colleges, um, depending on on what type of college they are, honestly, sometimes your your private colleges stuff have a large endowment. A lot of times, they give grants and they give some some different types of gift aid that maybe some of your state colleges aren't able to give. So now we're going to move on here, just through a few of these and and kind of fine tune them a little bit. First of all, your FSA ID, um, as Mr. Barry said, that replaced the PIN you used to use in prior years. And you're going to go to this website right here, studentaid.gov. That's where you're going to go and create your, your ID. And this is where you're going to fill out your FAFSA. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and we're going to take you right to the website. So you can see here, when you, when you go to studentaid.gov, the first thing you're going to see is this login or create an account. So if you, you've never created an account, you're going to make sure you create an account for the first time. One thing you need to know is this is going to be the account you're going to use for the, every year you have to fill this FAFSA out that you're in college. So you could potentially be filling this out four, six years, two years, whatever it is that you need um, to complete your degree program. Please remember, do not use your K-12, your high school email address that the state gives you. Those things are going to go inactive as soon as graduation takes place. 
So for graduating seniors, we usually give you about a week to get things off there, and then within a week, those emails that are school emails are going to be inactive. So make sure you have a personal, a Gmail, a Yahoo, whatever, whatever you have for an email, make sure that's a private email and not one through the state with the school. And also with that, we need to have the student as well as the parent create a FSA ID. So you both need to go in there, and one person shouldn't create them both. All right, so make sure that you create one for the parent and one for the student. And then while we're here, I'm just going to walk you up here. Um, you can see across the top, understand your aid. There's some, some things. Um, apply for aid. That's where you're going to fill out your FAFSA forms, complete the FAFSA form. If you want to apply for a PLUS loan, parents, that's where you do it under apply for aid. And then the next one is where you're going to do that master promissory note or your entrance counseling. So right here at the bottom, you can see right where my cursor is, it's going to complete a mas master promissory note. You need to go through and do that as well as complete the entrance counseling. That's going to basically walk you through all the terms, um, how the loans work, when repayment comes due. It's going to be kind of your loan counseling. Those two things have to be completed before any aid is released to the school of your choice. And they will remind you if you do not do that, those two things. They will remind that student when they get there that your financial aid is not been processed until you complete those two items. The one thing to remember too is once you know what school you're going to, you can put as many schools as you want when you complete this FAFSA. When you go in and complete the form, it's going to ask what colleges you want your student aid report sent to. You can list as many as you want if you're not sure. Now, once you know and you kind of have that fine-tuned where you're going, make sure you keep in contact with the financial aid office so that you can make sure you work through this process and everything gets sent there, whether it be scholarships, local or bigger ones, or whether it be your financial aid piece as well. So what kind of information are you going to need when you're filling out the FAFSA? Let's look at a few things you might need. Number one, you're going to need your Social Security number, as well as your parents' Social Security numbers. When you're filling this out, whether it's the student or the parent, I would advise the parents to fill these out. But if the student has um, the authority to do it from the parent, make sure you have both those. Your driver's license number, if you have one, because they will ask for that. Of course, your alien registration number if you're not a U.S. citizen. Your federal tax information or tax returns, including your IRS W-2 information, for you and your spouse if you are married, and for your parents if you are the dependent student. And these can be found, you might, you're going to need your IRS 1040, 1040 a or 1040-EZ income tax forms. Um, records of your untaxed income, such as child support received, interest income, and veterans of non-education benefits for you and for your parents if you are a dependent student. Information on cash, savings, and checkings accounts, balances, investments, including stocks and bonds and real estate, but not including the home in which you live, and businesses and farm assets for you and your parents if you are a dependent student. One, one thing to keep in mind there, I know sometimes this gets a little tricky sometimes, and we'll probably remind you of this at the very end here, but, you know, when it says, like, your, your assets and different things, you know, they do take some certain things out. One thing is that you're not supposed to include a farm or ranch or business with fewer than 100 people as an asset. So that may just uh, be something to keep in mind for those of you who um, are farmers or ranchers. The one thing that makes it a little bit easier is that they have created this IRS data retrieval tool that parents can use. And so basically you can sign in and you can basically um, input all of your, uh, your IRS data. That would be from the previous year's taxes. It'll just upload that right into the FAFSA for you. Saves a lot of time and a lot of headache and it usually um, Kind of guarantees to the FAFSA people that, that this is accurate information. So they, they prefer you use the IRS data retrieval tool if possible. The one thing with that that you'll see at the very end here in the next slide with helpful tips with this is that it has to match exactly to what you have on your taxes. That's the street, the names, the address, all that stuff has to match exactly. Otherwise, you're going to get an error and you're not going to be able to retrieve this. So make sure... 
refer back to your, your tax returns. Make sure that all the information you're typing into that retrieval tool is exactly the same on your FAFSA as it is on your taxes. And I will say this on your IRS data retrieval. If you use that, it will speed up the process because if you, if you do not have the opportunity to use that data retrieval, they will probably more than likely ask you for a paper copy of your income tax forms and it'll probably slow down the process. You can still do it, but with this uh, IRS data retrieval, it will speed the process up. Usually, once you have all this stuff filled out, you, you should be able to get a student aid report within uh, two to four weeks or less. They usually try to get this process as quickly as possible. Um, last couple things here, just some helpful tips. Make sure you pay attention when you're filling out the FAFSA. If you're on the student or parent banner, that should be across the top. I just mentioned the, the data retrieval tool is very picky, so make sure you have everything um, matching what you have on your taxes. And make sure you keep, keep track and watch for emails or mail for your student report, student aid report. Uh, once again, don't include farm or ranch or business with fewer than 100 people as an asset. Make sure you pay attention to the deadlines and stay in contact with each school that you're sending this to. And then once you got all the FAFSA filled out, once you've been in contact, make sure you go back once you know what you're going to um, accept and not accept. Each school you'll be able to go through and say, okay, I'm going to accept a subsidized loan, I'm going to decline the unsubsidized loan, and I'll accept the grants or the work study. You have a choice to go through and pick what you want to accept and what you want to decline. No matter what, it's a good idea to just go and do the master promissory note and the entrance loan counseling just so you have that out of the way in case you need to go back and accept some of those. And this can be done on a semester by semester basis. So maybe the first semester, I don't need all this. Second semester, oh boy, now I kind of need a little help. And so you can go back in and accept it at a later time. And then just a couple, just a couple information. There are some South Dakota scholarships out there. You got the Opportunity Scholarship. That one's a thirteen hundred for the first three years, twenty six for the final, a total of sixty five hundred. You do have to have a minimum three point zero GPA, ACT composite of twenty four or higher, and you have to uh, apply for that before your freshman year, which is September one. Dakota Core Scholarship. That's a really competitive, and it's for critical needs area you have to have a 27 or higher on the ACT and then the build Dakota um, that's high needs area a lot of times um, some of your tech schools and different things like that will let you know if you if you meet one of those um, those deadlines are coming up pretty quick here so if you have any questions on any of the financial aid information uh, make sure you give one of us a call here at the school we'll be happy to talk with you many of you that have seniors probably had older siblings had older students that you've been through the process, so this may not be new to you, but some of you may be the first time you're going through this. Sometimes it can be a little um, scary, uncertain what you're doing, but it's a fairly simple. Mr. Barry and I have both been through this with our students, so it's not too hard to get through. So if you have questions, please give us a call. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.